Hi there, welcome to video one resilience, a part of the building resilience for lake organizations video series. I'm Dane Whitaker. And in today's video, we're going to define resilience, uh, look at some applications or some examples of it, and talk about what you can do about it as a lake organization. So starting out, what is resilience? Resilience is the ability of a system to experience a change and still maintain its basic function and structure. Let's look at an example that all of you are familiar with, your morning routine. So there are lots of changes that can happen that change your morning routine. Uh, for example, you might have stayed up too late and hit snooze too many times. You go to the cabinet to make your breakfast and realize you're out of cereal, or you go out to the garage and notice your car has a flat tire. All of these things are changes that affect your morning routine. The resilient, your resilience is your ability to um, experience those changes and still make it to work on time. So maybe you've built buffer time into your morning because you know you sometimes hit snooze or you have eggs in the refrigerator so you're able to have eggs for breakfast instead of cereal. These are examples of resilience. But at some point, you um, all of these changes build up and you cross a threshold into an alternative stable state. You're late. Um, and so that can affect the rest of your rest of your day. Um, your manager gets mad at you, they yell at you, you're not able to get your work done. Um, and so these have cascading effects throughout your day. And maybe if this happens enough, you end up getting fired. And so um, that affects your uh, overall livelihood. So these thresholds are hard to predict when you're going to cross them. And once you've crossed them, they're hard to reverse. Once you're late, it's hard to be not late. So looking at another example of an alternative stable state, still thinking about your morning routine, maybe you went camping. I mean, wow, <laughs> how awesome would it be to wake up to this view? Um, so while, the, while you're still going through your morning routine and you might uh, perform some of the same functions, like uh, having coffee or eating your cereal, um, brushing your teeth, the, the structure has changed. So um, all, of, all of your supplies are carried in your backpack. Maybe you're using the stream to brush your teeth. It looks very different than your morning routine, even though it is still your morning routine. So here's an example, another example of an alternative stable state. And I wish I was there right now. So now let's look at a lake example. Um, the, this is Peter and Paul Lake in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And they're two separate lakes, lakes but I'm going to use them to explain this concept. So there have been heavy rains, and there are a lot of nutrients and sediment flowing into the lake uh, because of those heavy rains. And the resilience of the lake is the ability of the lake to um, absorb the nutrients and to uh, filter the sediment um, and still maintain its kind of uh, clear water and its basic function and structure. However, at some point, it's unable to absorb any more nutrients and it crosses a threshold into an alternative stable state and the water becomes murky and green and full of algae. Um, Crossing this threshold is hard to predict. We don't know at what, we know at some point um, the lake will change, but we don't know exactly when. And once this has happened, it's hard to reverse. Um, the nutrients are in the lake, and even if the algae uh, dies off, the, the nutrients remain there. Um, so it's, it's hard to reverse um, these changes once they happen. Looking at another example from lakes, these are walleye. So let's think about a walleye population. There are lots of changes that can happen um, in a lake, around the lake, uh, to a lake that can affect the walleye population. Maybe um, there's less, there's shoreline development, so there are fewer trees for the juvenile fish to hide in. Maybe there are more anglers and more people catching the fish. Um, maybe the water is warming to a point that walleye um, are uncomfortable in. All of those are things that affect the resilience of this uh, fish population. And at some point, um, 
they won't be able to handle it anymore. And they'll cross the threshold into an alternative stable state, which could be a lake without walleye. So I don't want to be all doom and gloom. There are things that lake organizations can do um, to help with this. So the first one is adaptation. Adaptation are actions that you can take to increase the resilience of um, a system, in this case, a fish population. So a couple of examples would be stocking the lake, adding juvenile fish um, if the fish aren't reproducing naturally. Um, the second could be uh, improving the natural shoreline so that there are places for the young fish to hide um, and also uh, filters out any nutrients. The second, the second thing that you can do as an organization is transformation. And so transformation um, happens when you expect to cross the threshold or you have crossed the threshold and you decide, and so the system has changed and you decide as an organization to transform to match that change. And so if there aren't any more walleye in the lake and that's what people used to come to the lake for, maybe you promote new uses like kayaking or if the business has relied on fishers and anglers um, for to, to make an ends meet then um, and, and they're no longer coming to the area, Maybe you promote the area to ATV um, users and bring a new group of people um, to the area to support the businesses. So those are a couple of examples of adaptations that organizations can take to increase resilience and transformations that organizations can make to match changes in the system. So why do we care? Why do lake organizations care? Well, there's a lot that you can do as an organization and as part of this system um, to contribute to the resilience of your lake or to transform to changes that you see. So the first thing you can do is understand the changes to your lake. Are you monitoring the water changes, the water temperatures? Um, are you talking with your um, partners in the D at the DNR to understand the the health of the fish populations in your lake. Um, these are all things you can do to understand the changes in your lake. Plan for adaptation actions you can take. So what are, um, what are things that you can do to contribute to the resilience of your lake? Could you uh, do aquatic, in, um, do invasive species monitoring at your boat landing um, to make sure that new species aren't introduced to your lake? Could you stock the lake? Could you educate people about um, natural shorelines? Those are all examples of adaptation actions you could take. And then third and finally, discuss organizational transformations. If you notice that a change is happening to your system and adaptation doesn't look like it's gonna work, what are things that you can do to transform as an organization? Do you need to uh, raise more funds so that you can commission a lake management plan? Do you need to um, increase volunteerism so that you have more monitors at the boat landing? So these are three, three different steps that you can take as an organization to understand, to adapt, and to transform. So in summary, we have three key concepts from today's uh, video. First, resilience. So resilience is the ability of a system to um, experience change and maintain its structure and function. Thresholds, which are the place at which a system transforms from one stable state to an alternative stable state. And then adaptation and transformation, which are both management actions that you can take as an organization. Adaptation increases the resilience of a system and transformation is a way for you to change, transform your organization to match changes you're seeing in the system. So I hope you found this video helpful today. Um, this is a part of the Building Resilience series. And um, if you did, please check out our next video fast and slow changes. Thank you and have a wonderful day.